Hi, I'm Sharoni and you're welcome to my YouTube channel. This channel has been in existence for some years now, but it's been just my musical content on this channel. But now I thought to bring my other edifying content. I believe it's going to be a blessing. Today, I want to share my testimony of marriage or my marital settlement testimony. I believe that this would encourage somebody who is in that season of waiting at the moment. I know it's going to answer questions and fix puzzles. So sit back and let's have a great time today. Where do I start from? <laughs> okay, so like almost every young girl in her 20s, I desired marriage or like from late teenage years but the truth is i'd always loved the idea of getting married and having my own home since i was in secondary school and i began to pray about my marriage the year after i left secondary school i began to pray about my husband my in-laws the family i'm going to end up with the kind of wife i want to be the kind of husband i want and you might feel it was too early but i was just making prayer deposit not that i wanted to marry any time around then but in, I decided to get married in my 20s and the the year I wanted to get married was going to be the year I clocked 23. Yes, I wanted to marry at 23 and I left uni at 20. I graduated at 20 so I felt well, yeah, my plan would work. I would marry at 23 now that I've left uni and schooling, first degree is over. At least I should marry at 23 like I desired. I had my best life planned out, like <laughs> I was a planner, I had my life planned out. But you know, the Bible says that there are many thoughts in the heart of a man, nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. So you could have your best life all planned out, but if you are walking in the will of God, it is the counsel of the Lord that will stand at the end of the day. So my best life was planned out and I went for, I went for youth service and after youth service, I finished youth service 21. and. After youth service, I got, into, I got into my first relationship. And when I got into that relationship, actually, let me mention that I didn't get into any relationship back in uni because I've always believed that if marriage wasn't in view, then there was no point for relationships. So I held on to that. I couldn't bow to any pressure. So I waited till after school. So when I entered that relationship, I felt, oh, yeah, it would work. I'll get married at 23. And good for me luckily for me i thought the person i was in a relationship with also had marriage in view so the relationship continued and to my utter shock that relationship ended at 23. <laughs> that 23 i desired to get married was when it ended the amazing thing is that it was not the relationship was in there were no issues it was a peaceful one it was a godly one we had godly standards he wasn't just interested anymore and it was over. So I was so heartbroken. I was heartbroken because I loved this person and I felt it was the best thing that has happened to me. And I just felt like who else, who else can feel this space? And that was the first part, the normal breakup feeling. The other reason I felt disappointed was that I desired to get married at 23. And at 23, I was ending a relationship. So I, I wasn't happy. I'm going to share the story of how I overcame that later on on another episode. But I was really disappointed. I was really, really disappointed. So I told myself that, okay, max 25, I should be married. So life went on and 25, I was still very, very, very single. I was wondering like, what's going on. I wanted to marry at 23. I could, I didn't 25. I didn't. Okay. Before my twenties are over, I'll be married. So I, I, I didn't put my mind on it. And let me mention here that the reason I was not so depressed and so overwhelmed in that season was that I had a lot going for me. I began my music at, I think at 22, 23. I officially started releasing my music. I worked at a job. I had my business. I was work. I was um, serving in my service unit in church as a chorister. So there were activities. A lot was going on. And also my... I was discharging my kingdom assignments. I was living on passion for God. Like that passion had been there since my secondary school days. So it didn't stop. I just kept going and going. So I couldn't, I didn't have that time to actually sit down and mourn my singlehood. So I didn't. But I must confess to you that at some point I began to get worried. Personally, I didn't get worried because a lot was going on and I felt safe and secure in God. But when external influences began to creep in, you know, people began to say stuff. People began to see all manner of things. It began to get at me. And I remember during the period I was single, people were saying all manner. And I want to thank God for the family 
I am I am from my parents didn't put pressure on me my father and my mother they didn't they didn't put any pressure on me so from my own home with my siblings and from myself there was no pressure but there were pressures from outside the place where I worked <laughs> people were saying all manner of things and you know there was a time somebody got into a squabble with my mom and the, the person said something like as beautiful as Sharon as Sharon her daughter is she can't even find a man to 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 Proposed to her. She said it in Yoruba that she Sharon she find to Koroko me, like just to spite my mother and all of that. So my mom was really hurt and I got to hear about it. I was hurt and I was hurt that somebody said that and my mom was hurting because of what somebody said. You know. So I I know that for many single people, sometimes the pressure is not from inside, but it, it, it begins to happen when these external voices begin to come so i would confess that i will i got to that place where the things i heard people say began to get at me and at some points i would confess i was depressed i was really depressed about it and you know i was just allowing the job the lord to be my strength and aside what people said as well the pressure from what people said there was also the pressure from relationship that didn't that didn't work from heartbreaks from do you get like I know that there's that pressure. There, there's a difference between you're just single and nobody's coming and for you to actually be in something and it just ends and when it ends with a lot of drama. Yeah, so there was that pressure everywhere. So I began to actively pray to the Lord and ask the Lord to settle me in marriage. Like, God, I desire marriage. Let me tell you, it's not wrong to desire marriage. The Bible says that he opens his hands and satisfies the desire of every living thing. So it's not wrong to have desires. So I desired marriage and I began to tell the Lord that, Lord, I desire to get married. Please settle me. And I was praying at some point. I'm just telling you, like, factually, if there's a word like that, what I went through, because I know there are people that can relate with this as a single Christian girl. So I was telling the Lord that, Lord, settle me. And at some point I prayed with pain in my heart. I prayed with pressure. There were times I cried. Like, you might think, why would she be crying? There were times I, I was frustrated. I began praying till I started crying. And I was just like, God, just do it. Why does this seem so difficult? Like, the years keep going by. And I remember sometimes crossover services, I'll be telling God that this is the last year I'm going to talk about being married. I'm not going to pray about it again next year because I know that I must be married by next year. And the next year will come and end. And December 31st, I'm at that place again telling the Lord that this is the last time. What's going on? So that was it. I was praying. There was pressure in my heart. I was sad sometimes. Other times I waved it off, especially when everything I was involved in took my time. I didn't have time to think about the fact that I was single. So I just did what I had to do on my job, on my music, on my business and all of that. So it was just like a roller coaster for me. And um, I got to the point where, I don't know how I got to this point, but I got to the point where I actually stopped praying about Lord said to me, Lord, it must be, it must be this year to pray, Lord, I must not miss it. I don't want to miss it in marriage because I have the call of God on my life. I know that marrying a wrong man is going to be a disaster. So I was, I began to pay more attention to that. So my prayers changed. I remember there was a time I took a retreat with my friends. We had a three days retreat. I was in it. I was in it. We were on a three days drive fast and we went to alone with God camp. Many people who live in Abuja will know that camp. So most nights I woke up and I was praying into the night and what I was telling the Lord I was, was God, I must not miss you. I must not miss it. I must not miss your perfect will for my life. As much as I desire marriage, I must not miss your perfect will. So I was praying and making those prayer deposits. From that prayer, it's graduated onto, I don't know, like that's the way God deals with us. It's graduated onto praying that, Father, if it's not going to be about kingdom, if it's not going to be about, if it's not going to be about kingdom, if this, if marriage is not going to be about impact on your kingdom, I don't want to get married. So you see, it's funny how God took me from, Lord, get me married. I must be married. I'm tired. People are saying stuff to, Lord, I don't want to miss you. To, Lord, if it's not going to be about your kingdom, I don't want to get married. So it's like through the process, God was dealing with my flesh. Like so many of us, we ask for things from God in the flesh and it's going to be very difficult. Like So when, when it was tied to his kingdom, God knows that, okay, this person actually has my interest at heart. She doesn't want to get married so that she will, people will say, well, she's finally married. She doesn't want to get married so that she will have beautiful photos of she and her husband to post on social media. This is about my own interest. And you know, wherever God's interest is, he puts his all into it. So that was my desire from my heart. I even wrote God a letter. I, I read out that letter in one of the episodes of a program I did on YouTube and Instagram called Radiant. 
like I began some months ago, I read it out to God. And I remember I was telling God in that letter that God, if it is not about kingdom impact, I don't want to get married. I want to marry somebody that both of us together have that mentality that we want to impact your kingdom, that we want our marriage to be a mirror of the relationship with, between Christ and the church, that we want our marriage to be a blessing to others. Like we want a model marriage, not because we are pretending, but because truly within and without publicly and privately we are living that life that people can actually tell god that god i want something that something like what sharon and her husband has and god is not scared for them because he knows we are not faking it so that was the prayer i was praying to god and i told god in that letter as well that god i know that you're a prudent person you're a prudent businessman you can't make heavy investments in somebody's life and have them miss it i know you have invested in my life so much and it's going to be a loss to you if i marry the wrong person this is this marriage thing now is no more about me. I'm turning it. It's about you now. I know you don't like to take a loss. You can't want to invest so much in me and have me end up in the wrong marriage because you will never want to take that kind of loss. So I said, God, by every means, I must not miss it. By every means, my marriage must be about kingdom impact. And if it is not going to be, I'm no more interested in marriage. I was praying that prayer at 28, 27, 28. When earlier on in my 20s, 23, 25, I was praying to be married and my prayer point changed. So I just continued my life. I continued with my business, continued at work. People were saying stuff. At the point when I began to pray these kind of prayers, I was no longer worried what people said. I was enjoying my single years. I was just exploring, doing all I could and all of that. It wasn't a bother anymore. So I think, like I said, God had dealt with my flesh. That was why I couldn't be bothered anymore. So people kept saying what they wanted. I just moved on with my life. I was happy. I was like everybody who knows me personally know how very playful I am so just remained my playful happy jovial self and I continued living my life I was running my business working at my job continued my service unit continued with my music I was writing great stuff on social media that was blessing people and I just continued living my life and another aspect was I continued with evangelism evangelism had been a part of me since childhood I remember when I was a child like from my early teenage years because I'd read God's generals too much I think I read God's Generals at 13 and you know my brain was infused with that a lot and you know there was this burning passion in my heart for Jesus. So I gave my life to Jesus at 13 and I really wanted to do all I could for him. So I would go out, I would preach in my neighborhood, I would enter into, I would enter into salons, preach to people, tell them about Jesus, tell them about the rapture, the coming of Christ. That was at my childhood. So it didn't stop. I continued, even when I moved to Abuja, I continued evangel evangelism. I remember my early years in Abuja in the buses I preached and when I talked, when I met people on the road, I preached. So I had friends, later on God brought amazing friends into my life. One of them whom I would end up being a sister-in-law. So God brought them into my life and we went out, we began to evangelize and at some point we told ourselves that why not let's buy a speaker and microphones and get into the markets, get into the open places and begin to preach. Let's sing with our voices. Since God has blessed us with amazing singing voices, I use it to draw men into the kingdom. So we went about that. We go to the market. The song we're singing was The King is Coming in Glory and in Majesty by Pastor Nathaniel Bass. So we went to the market. We went around Abuja and with our microphones and our speakers on Saturdays, basically, because that's when many of us, all of us had time. We're three. So we'd sing and after singing, we'd preach. So when after we started that, started that I told them that, why not let's post videos and photos of our, of, of our evangelism on Facebook, on Instagram, just to encourage other believers so that they can see that if these people can do it, we can do it as well. So that the harvest can be plenty, people can go out in mass and preach and win souls into the kingdom. So my friend said, well, that was a good idea. And one of them said, okay, but let's, let's, let's wait, let's wait on it. Let's, let's just wait for a while and continue without putting it on social media. At least let's let's test our motives to see that it's not like we are putting it there so that people can see that we are doing stuff or we are doing kingdom stuff like let's check our motive again so well that was cool by me initially the motive wasn't wrong the motive was for me so that people can see it and be encouraged and go out as well but when she said let's check our motive again it didn't sound wrong or bad to me and she said let's check our motive and let's give it time so we, we didn't post, we are going out, we didn't post and really we're praying to God that God search our heart. If there's any part of our heart that wants to post this stuff so that people can see we are doing amazing things or just to show people, deal with it already. So we are praying and all of that. When we add, when we add the release in our spirit to post, 
we posted. I began posting when we went out. I posted where we went and clips of evangelism and all that. Unknown to me, the man that would marry me was going to see that post and God was going to speak to his heart from that post. So one of the post of us at the markets preaching we're singing i was singing the king is coming in glory and in majesty and i didn't know that while i was singing that king jesus was coming he was also bringing my king to me like my king also was coming so i didn't know that the man that was going to marry me was on instagram and he was going to see that so that was where as it started those posts on social media of me preaching or where the gen or was or where the genesis of how i'm in this house right now with my husband in another episode i'm going to share how I was convinced that my husband is the will of God for my life. Many people have asked me that question, like, how were you sure that this person is the will of God for you? Somebody who met you on Instagram. Well, there's more to it. So I'm going to be saying that story in another episode. I'm going to share how I was sure that this person is the will of God for my life and how I knew, how I got my conviction and I agreed to marry him. Yeah, so... That's the story of my marital settlement and my marriage testimony. I know that this would encourage somebody. If you're in your waiting season right now, you're waiting on the Lord for something, waiting seasons can be very, very, very trying. It's not, it's not a funny season. You look around and it's happening effortlessly for everybody and you are wondering, what did I do to God? So that season can drain you, can drain you mentally, can drain you emotionally, can drain you spiritually. But I want to encourage you to cast your cares upon the Lord. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. There's nothing like the presence of God. No matter how difficult it looks, once you can find security and safety in God's presence, then the pressures will be taken away. For me, I found security in the presence of God. I found security from having a buoyant relationship with the Holy Spirit. When the world, when the noise of the world kept crashing in on me, I had a place I could run to. I had a secret place I could run to. And it was in that place I was able to pray and there was a shedding. Till God took me to that place where I stopped praying prayers in my flesh to pray more what God wanted, to pray more in the spirit. So I would like to encourage you to develop a buoyant relationship with the Holy Spirit and prioritize your secret times with God. You will find solace there. You will find comfort there. The world can be against you and be saying what they like. But once you get into that place, there's peace. And the truth is that nobody wastes Nobody waits on God and waits in vain. Nobody waits on God and is put to shame. Those who wait on God will never see shame. I keep saying it. That's like the theme of my life. Those who wait on God can never see shame. World without end. So it doesn't matter what people are saying about you right now. It doesn't matter how people are, are, are mocking that you are still single. So far your trust and your anchor and all your hope is in God. You can never see shame. God will give you a testimony that will blow people's minds. That's what happened with me. My testimony blew people's minds. And it happened so fast. So fast. I couldn't take it all in. Before, before I could process this, everything was just happening. Pam, 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 pam. And it was my wedding day. So God, God sped up things for me. And I've realized that many times when the expectation had been too long the manifestation will be so 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 expedited the manifestation will be so shortened because you have waited for so long that's why many people when they enter into that manifestation season people will get angry people got mad at me that i didn't let them know about my wedding i didn't invite them i didn't carry them along the truth was that everything happened very very fast so like even before i could absorb it things were just falling in place and happening so when the manifest when the expectation has been so long you've been waiting for so long Believe me, the manifestation is going to, to happen so fast. It would blow your mind and God would surprise you. God never fails. Don't lose hope. Keep on trusting God. Keep on living. Keep on serving. Kingdom services. You are not doing it so that God will give you a husband. I didn't go out evangelizing. In my wildest imagination, I never thought marriage would come from there. I was just doing my kingdom service and, and, and you know, my passion for God, going out for souls, my passion for souls and having them into the kingdom. I just was about that. I didn't know that God was doing something. And the truth is that for most people I've spoken with who are believers, like 90% of people got their spouses at the place of assignment. It could be that they were just in their service unit in church. Somebody saw them. It's mostly, it has been mostly from the place of assignment, from the place of impact, from the place of purpose. So continue chasing purpose. Continue living that life of impact. Don't just wait for your husband to come and marry you and stay depressed and... Just go all out for God and live your best life. Develop yourself and just have an amazing time. Enjoy your single years. 
People say they miss their single years. Well, for me now, I don't miss my single years. I enjoyed it thoroughly, so I don't miss it. So I'm focusing now on enjoying this new season instead of missing the single years. So I don't miss being single. I enjoyed my single years. There's nothing I regret. And I'm focused now on this new season of my life and enjoying everything that God has blessed me with. I believe this blessed you. And if it did, please like, please comment. I would be so, 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 so glad. To read your comments your comment means to me that you were blessed and you actually want me to come back with this content so please kindly leave your comments in the comment section and also share if it has blessed you share with somebody share with your sisters share with your daughters share with your friends share with somebody you know who needs to hear this and also kindly subscribe to this youtube channel i have amazing contents coming up my music and my speaking if, if, there's any, if there's anything like that so do well to subscribe to my youtube channel and i believe that you it's going to be a blessing to you before i go i'd like to remind you that we are pilgrims on earth the coming of jesus is closer now than ever jesus is going to split the sky very soon and the rapture is going to happen so i would like you if you're in that place where you've not given your heart to jesus you're not born again to Say the prayers I'm going to post next and pray it from your heart to God. And it's going to answer and you're going to be born again after praying that prayer. If you pray that prayer, you're welcome to the family of God. You're now born again and I pray that the Lord gives you the grace and the strength to walk in his will and to keep chasing after him. Till we see him face to face and you will not grow tired and you will not grow weary. And I'd like to admonish you to find a Bible-believing church. Allow, ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you to a church that is a Bible-believing church, to a place where his presence is so that you can grow. And the Lord help you in Jesus' name. And for we believers, if you are struggling with your prayer life and your study of the word and your worship, if you are struggling in your relationship with God, I pray that the Lord gives you the grace to bounce back and to keep running with passion for him. And the Lord keep us all in his love and his grace till the coming of Christ. Thank you so much and have a blessed, blessed, blessed day. Bye. See you in another episode. Thank you for listening. <laughs>